Thank you. Um, so Australia sold all of the oil reserves in the United States Strategic Reserve. Correct. Uh, 1.7 million barrels around about June 2022. Correct. Um, what, was, what was the sale amount? 220 million? Uh, I would have to take that on notice and I don't have that in my folder. And, and also, who was the oil delivered to? Uh, I, sorry, I would have to also take yeah. it on notice. Yeah. And how much was paid in sellers or fees, commission or whatever it is? I'm happy to break that Thank down you. for you on notice. How much is the continuing empty lease in the US a strategic reserve costing? Uh, we do have an ongoing uh, contract for um, for that, and I will again come back to you with a with a leasing costs on that. Great, thank you. That's all I had there. I'd like to move on to the Ute tax, please. I think we might have not called that, <laughs> Senator Roberts. We, we, Sorry, we don't, we don't have such a thing. <clears throat> you like to refer to the correct program? Your new car tax. Thank you. <laughs> no new car tax. Well, you know that what I'm talking about. Well, Senator How about you just say it, Senator Roberts, so that we can get the right people to the table? I'd like to know the new, um, the new fees for petrol and diesel vehicles. Does that capture it? It's possible you're referring to the new vehicle efficiency standard. Thank you very much. New vehicle efficiency standard, yes, that sounds a little bit... That's more another familiar. way of saying it. Minister, why were you so secretive about it? You passed it under guillotine with no debate. Yet again, another bill, no debate. Uh, Senator Roberts, the new vehicle efficiency standard um, brings Australia into line with the very significant majority of the international vehicle market. Uh, Excuse it's me, a Minister. Policy... We elected, the people of Australia elected your government to govern. They didn't elect the United Nations, World Economic Forum, United States, Great Britain, other global players. They, they wanted you to uh, govern this country, not on behalf of others. Senator Roberts, if you could allow the Minister to finish answering the Sorry, question. Chair. Thank Sorry. you. Senator Roberts, the government was very clear and uh, we had extensive public discussion about the new vehicle efficiency standard. I believe there were Senate hearings, although I did not participate in them. Uh, we discussed it here in the estimates um, Forum and also in the uh, neighbouring committee uh, at the last estimates hearings as well. Uh, officials can talk to you about some of the public consultation that took place, including the uh, position papers that were released. Uh, and senators had many opportunities to express their opinions about uh, this particular policy initiative through the course of the Senate's work. So we don't need debate anymore in the Senate? We do need debate in the Senate, um, Second Senator Roberts. Third These were important. Stage. Sorry, I thought you had asked me a question. Senator Roberts, I am. Senator Roberts, Roberts I'm going to ask you again. Question. Senator Roberts, I'm going to ask you again to allow the Minister to answer the question you have just posed and not speak over her. Um, yeah, so look, Senator Roberts, uh, the government's view was that this was an important reform, that there was some urgency to this reform. It was a reform that had been proposed uh, under a previous government during a previous parliament and not progressed. The consequences of that were that Australians continue to pay more than they need to at the Bowser because the vehicle fleet in Australia is less efficient than it could be because the range of vehicles available to Australians is considerably less uh, than we expect it will be under the standard. We think it's an important policy. We wanted to progress it uh, and we judged that the Senate uh, there was a majority of support in the Senate for that and we brought it on for, for consideration. So you're afraid of letting the people participate through their views expressed through senators in a debate in second reading and third reading committee stages and assessing amendments? Uh, Senator Roberts, I wouldn't characterise it like that okay. at all. Minister, are you aware that with an increasing amount of smart meters being installed, despite some people saying they don't want it, and charging happening overnight off-peak, electric vehicle charging off overnight off-peak. That's when coal-fired power is supplying most of the electricity. So there's potentially going to be an increased demand on coal-fired power stations as petrol and diesel vehicles are set aside in favour of electric vehicles. So you're actually in increasing the carbon dioxide intensity of energy. Uh, 
Senator Roberts, I'll ask some of the officials to talk to you through the expectations um, that we have for demand uh, on the grid, but the integrated system plan, which is produced by EMO, um, includes demand that is projected to arise from uh, the introduction of greater numbers of electric vehicles <coughs> into the Australian fleet, uh, along with a range of other changes. It also, as you know, um, shows a very significant shift to renewable energy, so the emissions intensity of the national electricity market is expected to decrease over time. So is, are they like the projections where you told us we'd be having lower power costs and we've got far higher? Senator Roberts, did you want to talk about the yes. issue that you originally asked me about, or yes. do you wish to move on? I just wanted to know what, what your projections were like, how accurate they are. Well, the integrated system plan is a long-established um, piece of analysis undertaken by the Australian Energy Market Operator, and uh, officials at the table can yes. talk to you about the expectations there and any other information we have about expected uh, demand on electricity. I might talk about, um, to start with, Senator, um, some of the different charging solutions we're seeing and, and how that's impacting. Certainly some of the investment and arena, who I know will be very better to tell you about some of the innovations they're looking in charging. You write a lot of charging is done at home, 80% uh, we think. But that's not just uh, from the grid. A lot of those people, not all, but a lot of them have actually batteries that they've stored from solar during the day. So they're actually, when they're charging, may, may be overnight, might be from a battery, but it might be from the grid. Note that the grid is um, slowly decarbonising as well. Um, so that's increasing day to day. There's other uh, innovations where we're seeing uh, EV charging being provided at places people visit on a regular basis, whether that's car parks during the day, whether that's at a workplace during the day, whether that's at the curbside, whether it's at the local gym, whether that's at um, some of the places like might be going to the movies, charging more and more. Sometimes that's in the evening, but a lot of time that's during the day. So we're seeing some um, innovation and there's certainly uh, been funding, not just from the Commonwealth, but states and territories to develop that innovation and look to maximise the solar in there. And, and probably just the last thing I'd say on the, um, the projections, because I do know that um, they take into account the grid uh, and the impact on the grid for the uptake of EVs, so they are in the figures that are provided um, each year when they do the projections. Minister, do you Senator, still maintain... Senator, Senator, sorry. Could Ms Rally just give you one, 30 seconds on that? Because it is quintessentially answered your question about how all of the emissions impacts are brought to bear. Sure. Yeah, and so just in relation to the annual emissions projections, we look both at the change in the vehicle fleet, including the uptake of electric vehicles, uh, which is helping to reduce the direct emissions from transport, but we also take account of the um, electricity required to meet the growing share of electric vehicles. And just by way of example, uh, for 2030 in last year's emissions projections, uh, we estimated that there was a 7 million tonne reduction in transport emissions and a 1 million tonne increase in electricity emissions to meet that additional demand from electric vehicles. So the net effect in 2030 was an estimated 6 million tonne reduction in Australia's emissions, taking into account both transport and sure. electricity. But I remind you, you can't tell me the impact on climate of that. So, and so you're basically going down a policy of spending money but not realising the benefit. As Minister, do you still Minister maintain... Roberts. I note that the um, new vehicle efficiency standards is uh, are projected to save consumers money and reduce the uh, impact of uh, the things like health costs on the Australian economy. Minister, do you Senator still Roberts, we're going to rotate the call. Last question. Last question. Do you still maintain, Minister, that punishing manufacturers who manufacture petrol and diesel vehicles won't reduce the amount of petrol or diesel cars available to Australians? Senator, I don't accept that characterisation of the policy settings. Thanks, Chair. Thank you.